few more days, Christmas is coming up. So, you know, I'm kind of excited about that. But, uh, you know, tonight, uh, as I was getting ready for church, um, I was just thinking about all the good things that God has done. And, uh, you know, it just seems like he never stops. Amen. It, it just continues. And uh, when I was getting ready, I was just thinking about the, the goodness of God. And, uh, you know, his goodness to me is just plainly amazing. And I was, uh, Melissa's not here tonight, but I was thinking about what she had to do tonight. Yeah. Even though I'm here ministering the word to you tonight, she's over at the other church ministering. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the greatest thing about that is, is uh, I remember when God put us together, and I believe God put us together for a purpose. And a plan. Amen. And, you know, as she's over tonight, she's witnessing the people and helping people out, out that went through the same thing that she went through. And, you know, sometimes we go through rough times, but God takes those same thing and uses it for a testimony to help others out. That's right. Amen. That's right. And you know, to me, that is a great thing. And I was thinking how God took us and put us together, but all at the same time, He's taken our ministry and He's it's it's like widespread. It's like spread. And you know, I believe in these last days that you know, if we stay true to God. He's going to use us more. Amen. And you know, that kind of excites me. Because I don't know about you, I want to be used for God. Amen. And not that I'm anybody, but I like to help others out too. And you know, God had spoke to me about something here this past week that we need to be more of an example. Right. Be an example to others. Amen. You know, being an example takes in a lot. It does. And you know, as, as being an example, um, you know, we, we take Christ. Christ is that main, he's a template. That's right. And you take you uh, take a company or something, before they mass produce something, they always make a template before they mass produce it. Mm -hmm. But you know, Christ is that main template. That's right. And you know what? He mass produced us. That's right. And you know, we are supposed to be like him. Right. Christ-like. And you know, um, as I was thinking about the word Christ-like, and don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not, yep. okay. uh, torching you tonight or anything like that, but I'm just saying, I got a lot of friends and family that think just because they go to church just a couple times a year that they're all right. right. <laughs> Come on now. I know there's times that you're going to miss church. I understand that. Me as a minister, I've missed church. I can understand it. Sometimes we all get sick, something happens, and we stay home. But I'm talking about family and friends. And I know it's going to be on Facebook tonight, but that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> but we all have family and friends that stay home 
And that's all they do. They go to church maybe three times a year. That's all you see. But, I don't know why I'm getting on this, but I'm going to anyway. But what gets me is, they stay home. I Trust me. I have a Facebook account. I'll put that out there. But they get on Facebook and they stay on their Facebook 24-7. And they get on there and they put Bible scriptures on there, Bible quotes, Bible this, every 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> now, I'm going to say something, and if they watch, it's probably going to make them mad. But, <laughs> hey, this is God. But you get on there and you post your comments and stuff on there every 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> and I, I'm going to come out and say it. God doesn't get up on Monday morning. And make a pot of coffee. And sit down on a throne and see what kind of comments you put on Facebook. Sorry, you don't. That's right. And they say, well, I may not even get back this time. They say, I don't have to go to church. Now, I'm going to say you have to go to church. Amen. If you... Or physically able, you should be in church. That's right. That's right. Now, come on. That's right. Now, I was really pondering about this this week. I was thinking about a married couple. Now, I want, I want Jimmy and Teresa to come up here for a second. Because I'm, I'm going to use them as an example. Now, Jimmy, you better get this right tonight, because if you don't, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> now, how many years have you guys been married? You better get this right. You know 27. 27, okay. Wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong? All right. So, you guys have been married for 26 years. Coming up 26. Coming up 26 years. So I was pondering on this, a born-again believer. If you're a born-again born believer, you should be in church as much, much as possible. This is God's house. You should be here. Okay? Now, I'm going to go a step farther. If you being a Christian should be in God's house. Now, I'm going to take these two right here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I remember a time when Jimmy stayed at our house. He couldn't stay at our house. He had to sleep on a porch. <laughs> it's true. It's right. Amen. Now, think about this. Soon to be married 26 years. They live in the same home. Now, if you take this married couple right here. Now, tonight, Jimmy, this is just an example. Tonight, I want you to go home after church. I want you to pack up all your clothes. And I want you to leave. Never come back no more. I just example now. <laughs> and I want you to quit your job tomorrow. Now, your job is you have duties at the house, right? Well, if he's going to do all that, he can just stay out. <laughs> now, we all, have, we all have duties. Now, your duties is... You know, as a woman, some men do it too. Washing clothes, making sure the house is clean and all this. I want you to quit doing all that. And I want you to completely separate. Okay? I'm just using an example. Completely separate. Now you tell me if you two are not living in the same house. You tell me what kind of relationship you guys are going to have. I know what he's coming with. You ain't going to have no relationship. Amen. Think about that. Now, I, I got people that tell me that I don't have to be in the house of God. Now, I'm telling you tonight. What kind of relationship with God do you have if you're not in His House. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. You're right. Because we all have duties to accomplish. That's right. Now, if these two didn't live in the same home, 
If they lived in the same home, and every one of them didn't do their duties, now what kind of household are they going to have? They're going to have a mixed up household. You can sit down now. <laughs> but I just wanted to give you an example of that. But I hear this all the time. But you have to be that example. And we should be an example more so today. Amen. Now, I'm going to read from uh, 1 Timothy, starting out with uh, chapter 4, starting out with uh, verse 12. It, and like I said, if my message tonight, my title is Being a Example. Now, in Timothy it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but thou an example of believers in a world in conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy, which was laying on the hands of Presbytery. Mediate upon the things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now come on. It says here, <coughs> be thou an example of believers in the word, conversation, and charity, and spirit, and faith, and purity. You know, last night I went to uh, Melissa's uh, work Chris Christmas party. And you know, a lot of people would say, well, I'm not going around a bunch of people that drink and do this and do that. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, Christ did. <coughs> Christ didn't act like he was better than anybody. Now, if Christ liked people, Christians, be an example. If we didn't go around people like that, how are they going to know? Right. right. You know, last night when I was there, I was sitting at a table. And you know, everybody around me was drinking. But I didn't sit there at the table and preach to them and say, hey, if you drink that alcohol, you're going to hell. Now what kind of Christian would I be if I told somebody that? But, you know, I sit there at the table and I talk to them. And, you know, all that night that I sit there, I could just feel the eyeballs looking at me. <laughs> you know, it felt like that all eyeballs were on me watching me if I was going to go up there and get a drink. You know, I didn't. Yeah, thank God I didn't, but I didn't. But, you know, I sit there. And, you know, it didn't make me feel uncomfortable. But, you know, it made me feel good. It made me feel blessed that I could sit there among people drinking. That I could be that example to them. Amen. That maybe somehow, some way, you know, that they would see the Christ in me. And, you know, that's what I want. I want somebody to see the Christ in me. I don't want people to see me. I want people to see the Christ in me. Amen. And you know the word says here, example of believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. You know, what kind of conversation do you have? That's right. Do you always show charity? And what kind of spirit do you have? Do you have a good spirit? Do you have a bad spirit? Do you have a loving spirit? What kind of spirit do you have? Amen. I hope you have a loving spirit. 
You know, here uh, a few weeks ago, I, or this week, week past week, I was watching a video. And there was a guy sitting in church, and he was stating the facts. What would you do if a drunk would walk into church? Would you just turn him away? Or would you just love him and show him kindness? And he was talking about how people, when people walk into church, we got people, Christian people, that look down our nose. Right. And you know what happens when somebody comes into church and we just look down our nose? We're turning them away. And you know, that ain't no good for them. You're not helping them. The only thing you're doing, you're not saying nothing to them, but the only thing you're doing by your actions is, is you're telling them to get out of the church and go back where you come from. Go back to the bar. That's right. But you know, we shouldn't be that way. Amen. We've got to show the love to them. And verse 13 says, To I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And I like this next verse. Neglect not the gift that is in envy, which it was given thee by the prophecy, which laying on the hands. You know, God has given every one of us a gift. You know, when you got saved, you got that gift. And you know, really, if God has given you a gift, that gift should be getting bigger. That gift should be expanding. That's right. If that gift that God gave you when you got saved and it's not getting bigger, there's something wrong. Amen. It should expand. You know, Christmas is coming up this coming weekend. <clears throat> and you know, there is nothing better that we could give somebody this Christmas holiday than Jesus, right? Amen. You know, we was all sitting around the table there uh, last night, and uh, Melissa, she was joking around with me. She said, oh, Mark, he was going to wear his vest and, you know, his uh, cowboy boots and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I said, I buy pretty much everything I need. I said, I don't need nothing for Christmas, and I was kind of cracking jokes about it. I said, yeah, I said, she makes fun of me about buying my vest and my boots, but I just bought my cowboy starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe one, one of these days I'll get the good stuff. <laughs> they was all making fun of me about that. But it says, neglect not the gift that is in me. Now again, if we stay home from church, to me, you are neglecting that gift that God has given you. Right. Now again, if you have ability or uh, things that you need to do at your home, like washing your clothes and doing this and doing that, now, the same applies to the church. God has given you a gift. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you cannot use that gift set at home. That's right. Now, every one of us has different gifts to give. But how are you using that gift? Somebody might come to church one night, but you stay home. And God needed that gift, but you're sitting home in a recliner. That's right. Now, how is God going to use that gift when you're sitting home? That's right. Amen. God can't use it. Now, that person might have really needed that. Or they might have needed some kind of uplifting. And you, you was able to help them because you went through it. You're not there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sitting home. I'm here to tell you tonight again. God doesn't have an iPhone. That's right. He doesn't have an iPad. 
He doesn't have a laptop. That's right. But we thank God looks at that stuff. No. Verse 15 says, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine, continue in them. For on doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now, if you're not here to hear the doctrine of the word, how are you going to continue in them? And save thyself and also save others. You can't. You have to first get yourself saved, get yourself right in order to help others out. That's right. Now, this Christmas, like I said, there's not anything that anybody can give me that I possibly want. Now, I told somebody there a couple weeks ago, they asked me, said, well, what do you want for Christmas this year? I said, well, I said, to be honest, I said, I got everything I need. But I said, if you're asking, I said, boy, I said, I've seen them 2017 Ford Mustangs. <laughs> I said, man, I'd sure like to have one of them. They said, well, I'm sorry I can't buy that for you. I said, well, I said, if you can't buy that Mustang for me, I said, don't buy me nothing. I said, well, it's the truth. But I, I did tell them that. But, you know, we have the gift that keeps on giving this, this, this renewed holiday. Amen. The gift of salvation. But you know, we have to be an example. And not only that, the, like I said, the Bible says you have to have charity, you have to have in the spirit, you have to have faith, you have to have purity. Do you have all that? Are you pure tonight? But I got some other scriptures here I want to read. Just a few more. I'm not going to keep you all tonight. I know sometimes I say that and I go on and on and on. Hold on, I'll find it here in a second. But I want to read these few scriptures here, and they're they're all familiar scriptures. Uh, Philippian, Philippians three and thirteen. And starting out with ver uh, verse 13, it says, Brethren, I count myself, count not myself, to have apprehended this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. And verse 14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Christ. You know, I like these two verses right here. You know, it says, forgetting not those things which are behind me, and reaching forth unto them things which are before. How many of us have arms in here? We have to reach. You know, in order in order to be an example. And there are other verses we read. It says the gifts and the callings are without repentance. But in these verses it says reach. You know, if you want to be expanded in your gifts and your callings, you have to reach. You have to stretch out them hands and reach. And you know, I was thinking about another thing is too. 
all these people that say that they stay home all the time and they say they're alright. I like, I, they say, oh, I stay home and I read the Bible when I pray. You know, I was thinking tonight, I like to just put on uh, Facebook. I'm not, I'm not going to the same. I like to put on Facebook. Oh, you so called Christians, you say you stay home tonight and you say it's okay. What scriptures in the Bible did you read tonight while you stayed home? <laughs> now, what kind of comments do you going? What kind of comments do you think I'm going to get? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. If you stay home from church, you are not doing things of God. I'm telling you. Now you gonna tell me that you're gonna stay home from church and you're gonna read and you're gonna pray. No, you're not. I'm telling you not. Because I, I I'm gonna tell you, just an example. If I stayed home from church tonight, you know what I'd be doing? Nope. I don't watch football. I don't even watch sports. But I'll be staying home. I like the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> now come on. I would be home in my bedroom. And I would be in my room reading the Bible. I would be sitting in front of that TV watching the Hallmark Channel. Watching Christmas stories. Now come on now. Be honest with yourself. Now these people are telling me, oh, I can stay home. And then I can be an example and I can be a Christian. Liar. <laughs> now, how many, how many in here tonight likes Hallmark Channel? Amen. <laughs> but they're telling me that they're going to do things God. No, 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 no. You know, honestly, some of these people... They sit at home. They have this, their, their favorite recliner. And I'm going to guarantee you, I'm going to guarantee you, that recliner is probably so wore out that if you would sit in it yourself, you probably wouldn't be able to get out of it. But they're staying at home and doing things of God. Now it says, I press toward the mark for the prize, the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now tonight, I'm going to leave you with this. It's time for us to press. Amen. Press harder than ever, we ever did before. You know, today we live in a society that everything is pretty much instant. Right. You press it, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know our dishwasher, you, you load it up, you push the button, that's it. You put your clothes in the washer, push the button, that's it. You know, matter of fact, this this past year I bought that truck. First time I ever had a remote starter, I hit that switch and boom, it starts. Which makes it nice. But, we do all of this stuff. But, we don't press toward that mark. What mark? The high calling of Christ Jesus. Amen. And you know what? Tonight, if we don't become that perfect example and be Christ-like and start pressing toward that mark, you know, we're going to miss that biggest gift of all. And that biggest gift of all is making heaven your home. And you know, know tonight, I truly want to be an example of Christ. You know, I, I truly do. I get, a, I get a laugh when people ask me, do you do this or do you do that? And I say, no, I don't do that. Well, why not? just don't. 
But you know, I, I get a kick out of that. But you know, 95, 96% of the time, I get a pretty good response about all that. People will look at me and say, you know, I really respect you for who you are. And you know, I like hearing it. Not because it swells my head up and it makes me feel good. But you know, I know that I'm going right by Christ. Amen. By keeping Christ in my heart and keeping Christ in my life. And you know, people, I want to see, I want, I want people to see their Christ in me. Don't look at me. I'm just like everybody else. You know, we, we all fail. We all, and the Bible says, the Bible says we'll slip. The Bible tells us we'll slip. But you know what the Bible also says? The Bible also says that when you slip, Jesus is going to be right there to pick you up. And you know, tonight as I close, as Teresa wants to come up, and if she wants to play a little bit of music, I just want to leave you with one thing tonight. You know, tonight, I always ask you, if you want to become closer to God, or you think you're slipping, or you think that you are missing some kind of gift in your life, I ask you tonight, you know, ask God. And you know, tonight, man, He'll replace. He'll give you that gift back. And you know, as, as the holidays come up, you know, God gave, gave His greatest gift to us. And you know, years ago they always said, you know, Jesus is a reason for the season. Amen. And you know, this coming holiday, selling, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, you know, tonight, if, if, if you want a closer walk with God, or... You know, if, if you just need help, come to Him. Amen. Allow Christ to give you that greatest gift of Himself. And man, you know, He'll give it to you. You know, when I, when I was a kid, uh, growing up, my dad was always put his sign in the yard and it said, Happy Birthday, Jesus. And, uh, you know, I, I'll never... I'll never forget that sign. But you know, tonight could be a start of a new day. Oh, right. And like I said, go ahead, Teresa and Kelly, go ahead and play something. Tonight, if you need a healing, if you need a miracle in your body, if you have anything in your life, if, if you need help, uh, it could be depression. It could be anxiety. It could be anything. Christ is here to take that away. You know, all you got to do is ask. If you're down in your spirit, God can lift you up tonight. But tonight, as it close, the altar is always open. And if you don't want to call me all night, hey, pray at your pew. God will hear you. Amen. You know, that's the greatest thing about God. No matter where you're at, God always hears you. Here's an open table with spread tonight. It's here. If you need it tonight,
Come to the altar.